In this video we're going to talk about z-scores, also known as standard scores or normal scores. And here's the formula for it. This is something that you probably should memorize because I think it'll probably show up on some standardized tests that you may take in the future. So let's talk about z-scores. So if you remember the normal distribution, uh, this is what it is here. It's a probability distribution that shows the probability of something being above or below a certain value. And so in this normal distribution here, we have the mean being zero, and the standard deviation is one or two or three or four, as you can see as we go. The standard deviation is, is, is represented by the sigma here. And as you can remember, one standard deviation away from the mean on either side will encompass about 67% of the values. Two standard deviations away from the mean will take about 95% of the values. And about three standard deviations away from the mean is going to have about 99.7% of the values. And so when we say standard deviations, that means one, two, three on this side and one, two, three on this side. So we actually have six sigma, right? We have one, two, three, four, Five, six. So if you are six standard deviations here, you're going to encompass 99.7, three standard deviations to the left and two and three standard deviations to the right as well. But real life data is not always so clean. So let's take a look at some real life data over here. Uh, we got a bunch here. We got over here height. Okay, so we can see here, here's the height of men and women and the average height of men is you know the mean is 70 inches with a standard deviation of four inches and for women it is 65 with a standard deviation of 3.5 and if we look at weight it's over here we got 172 pounds as the mean with 29 pounds as a standard deviation for men and for women it's 143 pounds with 29 pounds as a standard deviation here and let's look at some other data so here we have uh, the act and sat college testing entrance exams and so the mean for the ACT whenever this data was provided was 21 with a standard deviation of 5 and for the SAT it was 1500 with a standard deviation of 300. So first let's practice just calculating some standard deviations. So let's go here to the height one and say we have a woman who has a height of 70 inches so the mean height for, me for men and your question is can we convert this into a z-score? Okay, so if you remember the z-score equals uh, the value x here minus mu divided by sigma. And so in this case, we have a value of 70 minus 65 divided by 3.5. We get 5 divided by 3.5 equals 1.42. So what does this mean? It means that a, a woman with a height of 70 that comes from a distribution that has a mean of 65 and a standard deviation of 3.5 would have an equivalent uh, z-score of 1.42 that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Let's do another one. Let's say that we have a man who has a height of 65 inches, okay, and we want to calculate the z-score for that. So we have z equals x minus mu over sigma and so now we're going to have 65 minus 70 divided by 4 which is equal to negative 5 divided by 4 which is going to equal to negative 1.25 so in this case uh, a man with a height of 65 that comes from a distribution with a mean of 70 and the standard deviation of 4 has an equivalent z-score of negative 1.25 from a, from a distribution that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And this makes sense, right? Because we know that 65 is less than 70 and negative 1.25 is less than 0. We calculated these numbers, but what can we actually do with that? So let's, let's come over to here to our ACT one. Let's say that you have two candidates and that are applying for the same slot, okay? And the person, one person took the ACT and got a score of 24, and the other person took the SAT and got a score of 1800. 
So which one got the higher score? Which one should you admit, assuming we're only admitting based on the score? So let's calculate our z-scores here, okay? So here we got z equals x minus mu over sigma, which means 24 minus 21. 24 minus 21 over 5 equals 3 over 5. That's the same as 6 tenths or 0 0.6 something similar with the SAT score. So z equals x minus mu over sigma. And we knew this person got an 1800. Uh, and the mean is 1500. And mu is 300. So that equals 300 over 300 or 1. So which person got the higher score? Well, this one had a z score. Of 0.6 and this one had the z-score of 1. So this one is further away from the mean. It's actually one standard deviation away from the mean than this one, which is a little bit less, 0 0.6. So if you're going to go just based on the scores, you might want to admit this person. Okay, let's do one more example here. And here we got the heights of some popular Star Wars characters. And you can see that R2-D2 is 3 foot 7 inches. Princess Leia is 5 foot 1. C-3PO is 5'9", so is Luke Skywalker, etc. All the way up to Chewbacca, who's 7'6". And Baby Yoda is, of course, 16 inches. Full-size Yoda, 26 inches. Okay, so let's ask this question. So we want to know what percent of the U.S. population, male population, is taller than Luke Skywalker. So we see here that he is uh, 59 inches, right? So... Five foot nine, I believe, is the same as 60, 69 inches. All right, so let's see if we can calculate a z-score here. Okay, so z equals, again, x minus mu over sigma. And we know f that our x is going to be 69. And from that other graph we had here, we had weight height here is 70 with a standard deviation of 4. So let's come back here and put those numbers in. So minus 70 divided by 4 equals negative 1 divided by 4 or equals negative 0 0.25. Wonderful. So what is that? How does that help us answer this question? Well, let's go back to that, that uh, table we had here, this, this graph here. So a z-score of negative, what did we say it was? Negative 2.5. Okay. So we know that if this is 0 over here, this is 0 over here, this is one, negative 1, negative 2, and let's say that would be like negative 0.5. So right here would be negative 0.25, right? So, what percent of the population is taller than Luke Skywalker? Well, it's all this percent, right? Because this is going to be greater than his height. So we know it's, you know, he's shorter than the mean, so we know at least 50% of the people are going to be taller than him, but it's actually a little bit more than that, right? Because we got this sliver here. So how much is that? So you know, maybe if this is 34, we could perhaps estimate that. All right, so let's split 34 into thirds, right? So 11 and 11. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it's, it's 50 plus 11, so 61. So the answer is maybe 61%. That's a pretty good estimate, but guess what? We can do better. And in this case, what we want to do is find a Z table. And so I've got one here. So here is a Z table. Now, Z tables come in all sorts of flavors. And so this one, and we'll look at the different flavors in a second. But you can see here, this one says that it's going to give us the percent that is underneath this in this gray area. And, it's, and here's the Z value, right? And it looks like this one's only going to go up to zero. Okay, so let's take a look. And so what was our number that we had? We had a z-score here to be equal to z equals negative 0.25. So we need to find that in this table. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to say, okay, here's negative 0 0.2, right? And then we've got to find 5. Okay, here, 5. So negative 
0 0.25 is going to be along here where this and this cross. Now there are computer programs and even calculators that can do this now, but before calculators and stuff, this is the way we had to do it. And so we got 40.13, okay, uh, 0.4013. That means that this area right here is 0 0.4013 or 40.13 percent, right? So what does that mean? We want to know actually this area over here. And what is that? Well, it's going to be 100 minus that. So 100 minus 40.13 is going to equal 59.87. Uh, percent. So now using the z-table we can say that 59.87 percent of US men are taller than Luke Skywalker. Right? Is that what we got here? We guessed this. We we're pretty close, right? 59.87 percent is the real answer. So almost 60 percent of the US male population is going to be taller than Luke Skywalker. And so that's kind of what the z-scores let you do. It lets us compare two different normal distributions like we did here with the ACT and the SAT. And it can also let us calculate probabilities. And in this case we calculated the probability that uh, a given person in the US population is going to be taller than Luke Skywalker. We calculated the z-score in order to do that. Said there are different flavors of z-score tables and so you can see here's one that will give you the probability of a z-score from 0 to whatever the z-value is and so these are going to all be positive values because it's going to be above 0 so if you want something that's in here you're going to have to do some math knowing that this is symmetric right so if you wanted to know the value of negative z here you'd have to take this subtract it from 50 percent and that'll give you like this little sliver here and that'll give you that over there again that's, this is the kind that we used before, which takes just um, gives you some the probability that's to the left of a value. Another one here, this one allows you to go with positive and negative values as well. It starts at zero, as you can see over here, right? But it's going to include everything that's over here as well. So you're going to see a value of zero is going to have 50 percent here because half of it is included now in that other one that we looked at the first one over here a value of zero is going to have zero because it's not including this slice so make sure you look at that little picture at the top of the z table to see what you're getting okay so now let's look at how you would do this in a spreadsheet and so this is google sheets here and uh, you don't have to always use z tables and so this is how we can do it here so we have luke's height is 69 right we have the mean height of the U.S. males is 70 inches and the standard deviation was 4. So we want to know the percent of the population that is shorter than Luke and we're going to use that to calculate the percent of the population that is taller than Luke. So we're going to use a function here called norm dist. It's a normal distribution function and so that allows us to uh, use a normal score or Z score or standard score and the values that you got to put in here is X you got to put in the mean, you got to mean the standard deviation, and then a true or false value that says do we want to use everything that is uh, to the left of zero or not. And in this case we do, so we're going to make that be true. Okay, so let's fill in these values here. So the x we know is 69, right? We know that the mean height is going to be 70, right? And then the standard deviation is going to be 4. And we said we're going to want this to be true. And so we get here that 40% uh, of the population is going to be shorter than Luke. We can put this into a percent if we want, so let's do that percent. There, 40.13%. So now, what percent of the population is taller than Luke? Well, we want to get the opposite of that, so we're going to subtract that from 100% or 1 minus this number. Boom, and we get 59.87%. And so that's a way of getting these percentages without using the Z tables. And now we can enter in different numbers if we want. Let's say that Han Solo was um, 70 inches tall. Then we would say that he was pretty much at the mean. Let's say that uh, Chewbacca was, I don't know, 
86 inches tall. Well, he's going to be taller than everyone. I don't know who's in between. Let's say somebody is 75. Then we'd say only 10% of the population is going to be taller than them. And so you can use spreadsheets now, and I recommend it because it's so much easier than going through those tables. But on a test, you might have to use those tables. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Uh, see you later.